Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of a Russian-made condenser microphone. The microphone that we're looking at is the Soyuz SU-023 bomblet. See? Eh? Eh? I got it right. I pronounced it right. I, too, can be a man of culture. <laughs> If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $1,200. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is set at around 2 o'clock, 48 volts on, and I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now, of course, we will talk about what comes in the box. First off, everything comes in a really nice wooden storage box. You will of course get the microphone, a microphone clip, but no 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a 20 decibel pad, which I will demonstrate how you install shortly, some documentation, and a sticker. Then as far as the build quality, this microphone feels absolutely incredible. It is a chunky boy, and I absolutely love it. It has an all-metal body as well as a metal mesh grill, and the capsule is on this stem, so I would be careful not to drop it. It weighs in at around 510 grams. Like I said, chunky boy. Damn boy, he thick! And as you move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches or dials. It is very bare bones. And this microphone is made in Russia. Then if you want to add the 20 decibel pad to the microphone, you will unscrew the capsule like such. Then you will screw on the 20 decibel pad in its place and then screw the capsule into the 20 decibel pad. And on mine, I should note that when you use the pad, the capsule then faces the side, so you will need to rotate the microphone on the stand a little bit to make sure you're singing into or recording the front of the microphone. Next, as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 30 hertz to 18 kilohertz, a sensitivity of approximately negative 32 dB, an impedance of 190 ohms, a max SPL of 140 dB, an EIN of 18 dBA, and a phantom power requirement of plus 48 volts. Now I am spinning around the Soyuz to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around the microphone to 180 degrees. Here's what the rear of the capsule sounds like. Continuing around the microphone to the second 90 degree angle. And then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Next we'll go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this microphone. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. About three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how the audio sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you Leet W gamers, now I am typing on the sad boy gamer keys. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Now I am tapping on my desk to see how well the provided mount does at rejecting that kind of noise. And now I am tapping on the boom arm. And now I will go ahead and tap the microphone's body to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I want to do a very quick comparison between the 023 and a couple of other condenser microphones so we can get an idea of how this microphone stacks up against the competition. Of course, we will start on the Soyuz SU-023. I am six inches away from this microphone. My gain is set at around two o'clock, and here is how the audio sounds. 
The first mic we're comparing it against is the Audio-Technica AT2020. This is a $100 condenser microphone. I am six inches off, gain is still set at two o'clock, check the lower third, and here is how this microphone sounds compared to the Sayuz. We are back on the Sayuz microphone, same distance, same gain setting. Make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these microphones in post. Let's jump to the next one. Now I am speaking into the Neat King B. Again, I am six inches off, gain at two o'clock. This microphone goes for around $130 now. And here's how a very affordable microphone sounds like compared to the SU-023 Bomblet. Let's jump back to that mic. Hey, we're back on the Sayuz microphone for a third time. Let's go ahead and let your ears get acclimated to the sound of this microphone before we jump to another one and let you hear that. Now we are on one of my all-time favorite microphones, the Rode NT1. This is a $270 or $230 condenser mic, depending on the package you get. I am six inches off of this thing, gain set at two o'clock, and here is how this microphone sounds like compared to the Bomblet. I'm not sure if Sayuz and Octava are the only two microphone companies in Russia. Let me know in the comments down below. But we are back on the Sayuz microphone and let us jump to another one and compare it to that. Next, we are on the Shure KSM32, which is a $500 condenser microphone. No pads, no filters engaged. Six inches off of this thing, gain set at two o'clock. And here is how this microphone sounds like compared to the, the one that we're reviewing. It's how it sounds compared to that one. Back on the Sayuz microphone, I can see my double chins reflected in the microphone. Very cool. But here is how this microphone sounds. Six inches away, gain at two o'clock. Let's jump to another one. Now we are on the Austrian Audio OC818, which is a $1,000 multi-pattern condenser microphone. Another one of my all-time favorites. I am six inches off of this thing on the cardioid polar pattern. Gain set at two o'clock. Check the lower third because I will have to boost this one quite a bit more than the others. And here is how it sounds compared to the Sayuz. Just so you can hear this microphone again before we jump to another one, this is the Sayuz microphone. Let us jump to another one and compare it to that. Now I am on the Neumann TLM-103. I am six inches off of this microphone, gain at two o'clock. This is an $1,100 microphone and here is how this mic compares to the Bomblet, the SU-023, which is $100 more expensive. I think this is the last time that we are jumping to the Sayuz microphone before we jump to one more microphone and let you hear this mic compared to that microphone. And lastly, I am on the Neumann U87 AI, which is a $32 to $3,600 condenser microphone. I am six inches off of this thing on the cardioid mode. No pads, no filters engaged. Gain is set at two o'clock. And here is how this mic sounds compared to the Sayuz. Let me know in the comments down below which of these microphones you like the best. Did you like the Sayuz? Did you like the NT1, the King B, the TLM-103, U87AI, any of them? Let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> I'm out of ideas again I've got nothing to sing about my friends Won't anybody help a poor idiot like me I need something that's easy I can sing Today Let me know in the comments down below if you can guess what song that chord progression is from it's a...
Ooh, Easter egg. Let me <laughs> let me know down below. All right, I think that this is a really fun and somewhat vintage sounding microphone that is just really easy to listen to. And first up in terms of pros, the tone of the microphone is very natural and smooth. Nothing is over boosted sounding or harsh. Nothing sounds as though it is missing and overly cut. Ultimately, it is a very pleasing microphone to listen to and the build quality is outstanding. It feels like an absolute tank. And then in terms of cons, the microphone doesn't seem to offer much in terms of protection from plosives, so you will need to grab a pop filter, and it doesn't do the best job at rejecting any kind of bumps of the desk or the microphone stand. Now, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I thought the low end was surprisingly controlled, the mids were nice and punchy and present, and the top end was still there, it had all that information, but at no point did it sound overboosted, harsh, or unpleasant. Ultimately, a very nice sound if you want a little bit more of a vintagey, soft kind of electric guitar sound. Then on the acoustic guitar, it is not the most crisp sounding microphone that I have heard. It still does have plenty of top end, but it doesn't get over boosted or overpowering. It maintains a smooth and pleasing upper frequency range. The mids, I don't know how else to describe them other than a little bit gooey. I don't know how else to describe it. I really enjoyed the mids on the acoustic guitar and the low end was unobtrusive. It's there, but it's not overpowering. It's there, but it's not muddy or loose. Really nice tone for the acoustic guitar. And then for singing, I found the mic to offer a rich low end, especially if you hit a low note. The mids are a little bit more forward than a modern sounding microphone, and the top end is articulate but smooth and airy at the exact same time really unique and very pleasing sound for singing. And lastly for spoken word, I don't think the microphone is overly detailed, but it is still very clear and it doesn't sound over boosted or sibilant. The low end tends to have a nice amount of weight to it, especially if you engage that proximity effect and the mid frequencies are still present, but they don't come across as nasally or congested. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Sayuse SU023 Bomblet microphone? Yes, I would, especially if you're looking for a microphone that is a little bit more vintagey sounding. If you're looking for a spoken word microphone in a treated room because it doesn't do the best with background noise rejection, and you want a microphone that is a little bit more soft sounding, where nothing is too offensive, it doesn't become fatiguing, it has a bit of weight to it, I think it would work really well in that situation. Or if you're looking for a microphone to record some music with and you want to tame some of those higher frequencies without the recording sounding dull or dead or like you rolled off all of those upper frequencies. This mic maintains all of those frequencies, but it captures them in a very smooth and pleasing way. So I imagine it would work really well for some brighter instruments. All right, I think that's gonna wrap up for today, but I want to hear from you in the comments down below, which of the microphones that I compared the Sayus against did you like the best? The Rode, the Neat, the Neumann, the Neumann, the Sure, any of them. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want more videos, subscribe, click that logo down beneath me, and don't forget to hit that bell icon. If you want to hang out in the Discord server and talk about microphones all day long, check out podcastage.com slash Discord. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you later.